So here's the layout. Let's examine the first four balls. The key to the first four balls is to create an angle in the four ball that will take the cue ball to the other half of the table for position on the five ball. If Jason can create a high angle in the two ball, he can send the cue ball two rails around the four ball. At this angle, Jason can send the cue ball three rails, creating a high angle on the five ball. If he lands on the two ball pocket line, he can draw back to the side rail and back out for his position. Or he can keep the cue ball in the same area as the two ball, then pocket the four ball in the corner, sending the cue ball off the side rail for shaping the five ball. Now that he knows where he needs to be for the two ball, he needs to determine the best way to get to this position area. One option, which is very good, is to place the cue ball here and send the cue ball off both side rails, landing in the position area. While this is a very good option, it's not the best option. The best option would be to place the cue ball here and send the cue ball off the side rail. This type of shot where you're using maximum high to send the cue ball to a target on a side rail is a shot that Jason Shaw excels at. In this game, Jason has ball in hand, but he has a problem with a three ball since it's frozen on the cushion next to the side pocket. On this shot, he'll be using maximum high to send the cue ball toward the three ball to break it out. When shooting shots like this, it's important to pick out a target on the rail before shooting. This will help you fine tune your angle when you're down on the table. So Jason ended up on the two ball pocket line. On this shot, he can draw back to the side rail and back out, creating this angle on the four ball. The other option, and the one Jason chose, is to pocket the two ball and roll forward a couple inches. Now he can pocket the four ball, sending the cue ball off the cushion, creating his high angle on the five ball. The advantage of playing the shot this way is that Jason will be left with an angle in the five ball that will help move the cue ball across the six ball pocket line. This type of shot where you're just moving the cue ball a couple inches takes a bit of practice since where you strike the cue ball has to be in sync with the speed of the shot. There are two ways to play this shot. The first way is to aim a little above center with a firm stroke. But if our speed isn't perfect, we're gonna get too much roll on the cue ball. The other way of playing this shot, and the one Jason chose, is to shoot center and use the speed of the shot to move the cue ball forward. I'm gonna shoot this shot three times and each time I'll be aiming center. The first shot is the soft speed and we get too much roll on the cue ball. If we shoot with too much speed, now the cue ball slides all the way to the object ball, killing the cue ball. On the next shot, I'll be shooting with a medium to medium hard speed, which gives us a little more movement on the cue ball. As we just mentioned, Jason needs to create an angle in the five ball that will take the cue ball across the six ball pocket line. The danger area is landing here on this side of the pocket line. So an angle like this on the five ball is better than an angle like this, where the angle is doing less work as far as moving the cue ball. Once he crosses the six ball pocket line, he can send the cue ball off the side rail, creating a high angle on the seven ball. From here, he can pocket the seven ball, making sure he comes up short of the eight ball pocket line, which will allow him to send the cue ball this way or two rails like this. So when Jason shoots the four ball, he's not going to use right spin. On shots like this where the next ball is near the other end rail, players may use right spin to send the cue ball closer to it. The problem with using right spin is that it widens the angle off the cushion, creating a flatter angle on the five ball. Since it's imperative that we cross the six ball pocket line, we need an angle in the five ball that is going to help move the cue ball to our position area. And when Jason shoots the five ball, we can see that he's using a soft stroke, which is a good indication that he created the proper angle on the five ball. At this angle in the six ball, he'll be sending the cue ball off the side rail and toward the seven ball at a high angle.
When he shoots the seven ball, his goal is to land short of the eight ball pocket line. So at this angle, he'll be rolling in the eight ball, sending the cue ball toward the third diamond on the second side rail. So here's the layout. Let's examine the first four balls. The whole key to the first half of this runout is creating the proper angle in the four ball to get on the five ball. If Joshua can end up on or very close to the three ball pocket line when he shoots the two ball, he can kill the cue ball creating this angle on the four ball that will allow him to send the cue ball in this direction. Now we need to determine the best way to get to this position area for the three ball. If we examine the one and two ball, Joshua's options are limited due to the layout of the balls in this area. On this one ball shot, he has two decent options. The first option is to roll forward, creating this angle on the two ball. Playing shape on the two ball this way is a bit delicate considering how close both balls are to each other. At this angle on the two ball, he can use top spin to send the cue ball toward the three ball pocket line. And the second option, and the one Joshua chose, is to pocket the one ball and send the cue ball off the side rail, landing next to the four ball. At this angle, he can use maximum high with about a tip of left spin to go two rails toward the pocket line. When he shoots this shot, he'll be using maximum high with about a tip of left spin. And when you watch Joshua shoot the two ball, you'll notice how the cue ball takes off due to the maximum high. So Joshua landed on the pocket line, but before he shoots, he takes his time to really lock in on exactly what angle he needs for the four ball. Playing pool at a high level is all about knowing which angles are ideal for sending the cue ball to the position area. For example, ending up at a flatter angle like this is more suited for sending the cue ball in this direction. This angle works for sending the cue ball to the middle of the side rail. And this angle is ideal for sending the cue ball to this area. On this shot, there's a couple danger areas that he'll have to watch out for. The first one is landing behind the seven ball. And the second one is striking the seven ball full, which may kill the cue ball. Joshua knew that on this shot, there was a risk of running into the seven ball, but he felt his odds were pretty good at getting a shot on the five ball if he did strike the seven. Before he shoots a five ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. The shot on the five ball really illustrates the difference between professionals and the average player. On this shot, due to the angle, most players would end up anywhere in this area for the seven ball. Then depending on the angle, they would try to get on the eight ball. Professionals are always trying to create angles to help move the cue ball around the table. If Joshua can land at this angle in the seven ball, he can send the cue ball three rails for his position on the eight ball. Although it was easier for him to land in this area from the five ball, he didn't want to leave his angle in the seven ball to chance. By playing off the end rail, this ensures that he'll have an angle that will help move the cue ball to his ideal position area. When he shoots the seven ball, he would like an angle in the eight ball around here, which will allow him to send the cue ball toward the position area for the nine ball. In order to get to this position area for the eight ball, he'll need to use low spin with about two tips, a left spin. The low spin helps pull the cue ball a little further down the end rail, and the left spin sends the cue ball in this direction. The goal is to strike the side rail around here, which will send the cue ball in the proper direction. So Joshua ended up with more angle in the eight ball than he would have liked. 
and this shot is much more difficult than it looks. If he softly rolls in the 8-ball, the cue ball may go too far, leaving a difficult shot on the 9-ball. So when Joshua shoots the 8-ball, he needs to reduce the amount of roll in the cue ball by the time it strikes the 8-ball. He will also be using a touch of left spin, which makes pocketing the ball a little easier and helps keep the cue ball on a straight path across the table. So here's the layout. Let's examine the first four balls. The five ball has enough room to go into the side pocket, which means if Catchy can land on or very close to the three ball pocket line, he can draw back a couple inches for position on the five ball. So the key to the first four balls is to land at this angle on the two ball. A good rule of thumb to remember is that you should always be aware of which side of a pocket line is the danger area. If we examine the two ball pocket line, we can see that the danger area is on this side of the pocket line. From here, it would be very difficult to get back to this position area for the three ball. The correct side of the pocket line is on this side, which will allow him to slide the cue ball over to the side rail. When he shoots the one ball, he now knows that he has to avoid ending up on the wrong side of the pocket line. So he wouldn't travel this way off the side rail since he wouldn't have his position until the very end of the cue ball path. Coming up short will leave him a very difficult shot on the two ball to get on the three ball. One possible option is to go one rail like this, but even this wouldn't be the correct way to play the shot. Even though we're traveling on the correct side of the pocket line, we wouldn't have our ideal angle on the two ball until the very end of the cue ball path. Coming up short will leave a very difficult shot on the two ball to get on the three ball. If he can play the one ball in this corner pocket and just maintain this angle toward the two ball, even if he ends up short, he'll still have the correct angle on the two ball to get on the three ball. These are the types of shots that players need to add to their arsenal. It really opens up the position window for their next ball. When he strikes the one ball, notice how the cue ball tracks toward the two ball at the correct angle. When playing shots like this two ball where you have to land near a pocket line, first find out where the pocket line meets the rail. This will give you a target to send the cue ball toward. Once you add this target, it may help to visualize a path from the object ball to this target. This path will tell you what speed you'll need along with where you need to strike the cue ball. So Cashy ended up near the pocket line. Before he shoots a three ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. The goal in this three ball shot is to land on or very close to the five ball pocket line. From here, he can draw straight back, landing short of the six ball pocket line, which will give him an angle he can use to get on the seven ball. At this angle, he can pocket the seven ball and land on or on this side of the eight ball pocket line. Since Cashy ended up a little short of the three ball pocket line, he can no longer kill the cue ball. Now he's gonna have to draw back to the side rail and back out to create his position for the five ball. When he shot the three ball, he ended up on this side of the five ball pocket line. At this angle, if he attempts to draw the cue ball back, it will travel in this direction. Even though he ended up at this angle, he can still get to his position area for the six ball. If we examine this shot, a maximum high cue ball will be sent in this direction. Since he needs the cue ball to strike the rail around here to avoid the eight ball, he'll be striking the cue ball with a very firm stroke shooting just below maximum high. By shooting below maximum high, the cue ball stays on the tangent line just a bit longer than shooting with maximum high. 
By altering the cue ball path like this, the cue ball now will be sent a little lower on the side rail. Also, he's going to be using left spin to straighten the cue ball's path off the side rail. And if we listen to Catchy shoot this shot, we can hear how much force he is using to move the cue ball to this position area. Color me surprised. Wow. Come on. wow. <laughs> Before he shoots the six ball, he needs to determine the best angle for the seven ball. When a ball is this close to the cushion, it won't take much of an angle to move the cue ball to the other side rail. At this angle, he'll be able to pack the seven and float into his position area. If he ends up with a little more angle, then he'll have to send the cue ball off the other side rail. The goal when shooting the seven ball is to land on or on this side of the eight ball pocket line. Ending up on this side means he'll have to send the cue ball to the other side rail. At this angle, Catchy will have to send the cue ball off the other side rail. His main focus when shooting the 8-ball is to make sure the cue ball doesn't land too close to the cushion. If he can put a little distance between the cue ball and the cushion, it will make the nine ball shot much easier. So here is the layout. Let's examine the first four balls. The one ball has just enough room to go past the two ball into the side pocket. But the main issue with the first four balls is getting a position for the four ball. His position area for the four ball is going to be around here. So now he needs to determine the best way to get to this position area from the three ball. An angle like this on the three ball would be ideal. At this angle, Joshua can use a soft rolling shot, which means he'll have better control over the cue ball path and speed. Now, if he ends up at this angle, he'll be striking more of the three ball, which requires more force to move the cue ball over to the other side rail. While this shot will still work, professionals are always looking for angles that will help them move the cue ball to their next position area. Now that he knows what angle he wants for the three ball, he has to figure out how to get to this angle from the two ball. If he can pocket the one ball and end up near the two ball pocket line, he can draw back a few inches for his angle on the three ball. In order to send the cue ball toward the two ball pocket line, he's going to need to use about two tips of right spin. And even though top players use low deflection shafts, using side spin on shots like this where the object ball has a narrow path toward the pocket really increases the overall difficulty of the shot. Players tend to keep their tip closer to the center of the cue ball on shots like this to help them better line up the shot. So on this shot, he's just going to use a touch of right spin and settle for a little more angle on the two ball. On this shot, he's going to draw back a few inches to create his rolling angle on the three ball. When he shoots the three ball, he's going to be using about a tip of left spin. The left spin will help straighten the path off the side rail to ensure that the cue ball lands above the eight ball. Before he shoots a four ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. His goal when shooting the four and five ball is to create a high angle like this on the six ball so he can send the cue ball to the other half of the table. Now he can pack the seven ball and create his angle in the eight ball which will allow him to send the cue ball to this area for shape on the nine ball. At this angle in the four ball, Joshua can send the cue ball toward the five ball at the correct angle. And this shot illustrates the benefit of sending the cue ball toward the next ball at the correct angle. In the game, when Joshua shoots a four ball, he under hits the shot, but he still has an angle in the five ball that he can use to get on the six ball.
When shooting the six ball, he has two options. He can send the cue ball in this direction for shape on the seven ball, or he can send the cue ball two rails. The advantage of this two rail shot is that Joshua can control the exact angle on the seven ball. Once the cue ball strikes the side rail, the angle toward the seven ball doesn't change, as opposed to the one rail option, where the angle changes as the cue ball travels down the table. This shot is another good example of sending the cue ball toward the object ball at the correct angle, which opens up the position window. The goal when shooting the seven ball is to create a soft rolling shot on the eight ball. When shooting shots like this eight ball, try to give yourself a target on the final rail to send the cue ball toward. On this shot, a good target would be the diamond closest to the side pocket. So here is the layout. Let's examine the first four balls. On the first shot, Skylar has two options. He can stun the cue ball toward the two ball, then draw back for the three ball in the corner pocket. The other option, and the one Skylar chose, is to pocket the one ball and send the cue ball off the side rail, crossing the two ball pocket line. And when Skylar creates his angle in the one ball, he's going to place the cue ball here, which allows him to use a rolling cue ball. Players sometimes make the mistake of creating a flat angle like this, then using a stun shot to send the cue ball to their position area. Both shots will work, but the rolling shot will allow the player to shoot softer, giving him better control over path and speed. His ideal angle on the two ball is here, where he can roll in the two ball landing on or close to the three ball pocket line. His goal is to pocket the three and four ball, creating a high angle in the five ball that he can use to get on the six ball. When Skylar shoots the one ball, he's going to be using about two tips, a left spin. The left spin helps propel the cue ball off the cushion and across the two ball pocket line. Skylar ended up with a little too much angle in the two ball, so now he's going to send the cue ball off the end rail and back up. When shooting shots like this, always be aware of which side of the pocket line is the danger area. Ending up short of the pocket line will leave a difficult shot to get back for the four ball. So on this two ball shot, it's better if he favors this side of the pocket line, since even if he goes too far, he still has a decent shot on the three ball to get on the four ball. Since Skylar will be rolling in the two ball, he's gonna have very good control over his cue ball speed. His goal is to land on or close to the three ball pocket line, since he won't need much cue ball movement to get on the four ball. So Skylar ended up at his ideal angle on the three ball. On this shot, he wants to land on the four ball pocket line, so he can kill the cue ball, giving him a nice angle for the five ball. On this shot, Skylar will be drawn back to the four ball pocket line. Before he shoots the five ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. When strong players play shots like this five ball, they tend to send the cue ball off the side rail like this, as opposed to the one rail option. They prefer this method since the side spin helps propel the cue ball once it strikes the cushion, which helps send it to its position area. Also, when strong players play this shot, they tend to strike the cushion near the third diamond, which helps ensure that the cue ball crosses the pocket line. Now, if Skylar had a little more angle on the five ball like this, now the angle is doing most of the work as far as moving the cue ball across the six ball pocket line. So at this angle, the one rail option would probably be the first choice. The goal in this shot is to land just on the other side of the six ball pocket line. So we can roll forward, landing on or just across the seven ball pocket line. If he lands on the pocket line, now he can draw back for shaping the eight ball. 
Landing across the pocket line means he can send the cue ball over to this area for the eight ball. On this shot, he ended up with a little too much angle on the six ball, which means he'll either have to play shape for the side pocket or come back to this area to shoot the seven ball in the corner pocket. The difference in both shots is the size of the position windows. If he plays for the side pocket, the position window is right here, which would require very good cue ball control to land here from the six ball. Now, if the cue ball lands outside of this position window, he can still pocket the seven ball and get on the eight ball but it becomes much more difficult. The position window for the seven in the corner pocket is very large, in that going too far, he would still have a shot on the seven ball that he can use to get on the eight ball. Even though top players are very good at putting that cue ball anywhere they want, they still play position based on the size of the position windows. So on this shot, Skyler is gonna play position for the corner pocket. And when he shoots a six ball, he's gonna be using a low stun shot with a touch of right spin. The right spin changes the cue ball's path off the end rail, keeping it away from the side rail. The goal when shooting the seven ball is to stay above the eight ball pocket line. From here, you can send the cue ball over to the side rail for shape on the nine ball. So here's the layout. Let's examine the first four balls. It looks like Shane will be pocketing the four ball into this corner pocket. Since the eight ball is close to the four ball, he'll have to land close to the pocket line, which will allow him to slide the cue ball over for the five ball. An angle like this on the five ball will allow him to either stun the cue ball toward the six ball or send the cue ball off the cushion into his position area. So now he needs to find the best way to land near the four ball pocket line from the three ball. There are three options that players may choose. First, this option where we send the cue ball off the side rail and toward the position area. This wouldn't be the first option for a strong player since they wouldn't have their position until the very end of the cue ball path. The second option, which is slightly better, is to send the cue ball off the end rail and side rail. If the cue ball strikes the correct part of the side rail, it should be tracking toward the four ball. But the best option, and the one Shane chose, is to use maximum high and send the cue ball off the cushion and toward the position area. Using maximum high to strike targets along the rail is a type of shot that you'll see top players use when they really need to control the exact path of the cue ball. And you can learn more about this type of shot in this video. I'll put a link in the description. This type of shot where you're using maximum high to strike targets along the rail is one of the most powerful shots that you can add to your arsenal. And the reason it's such a powerful shot is that when you're down on the table, you can really fine tune your cue ball path since you can see your target on the rail when you're down on the table. Shane's goal on this shot is to strike the side rail between the diamond and side pocket. The other advantage of this shot is that coming up short still leaves Shane a shot on the four ball to get on the five ball. Now on this shot, Shane could have used maximum high to send the cue ball this way. Players try to avoid shots like this if possible, since they won't have their position until the very end of the cue ball path. So their speed control has to be very precise. Now let's look at this shot on the four ball. If Shane shoots his four ball with maximum high, it's going to track in this direction toward the five ball. So on this shot, Shane's going to be using a stun follow shot. Since the sliding cue ball tracks toward the eight ball, a stun follow shot just means Shane will be striking the cue ball 
with a firm stroke, making sure the cue ball has just a small amount of roll on it by the time it strikes the four ball. And even though Shane is aiming low when he aims the cue ball, on his forward stroke he'll be striking much higher on the cue ball. Before he shoots a 5 ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. The goal when shooting the 5 ball is to create an angle on the 6 ball that will send the cue ball to the other side rail for shape on the 7 ball. From here he can roll forward, creating this angle in the 8 ball to get on the 9 ball. When Shane creates his angle in the 6 ball, he wants to avoid ending up with a flat angle. For instance, if he ends up here, he can still move the cue ball to the other side rail. But since he's striking more of the six ball, it will take much more force to move the cue ball. This type of shot is much more work than ending up at the correct angle and shooting softly. At this angle, you're letting the angle move the cue ball across the table. So Shane ended up with a nice angle in the six ball. His goal when shooting the 6 ball is to send the cue ball off the other side rail, creating an angle on the 7 ball. He doesn't want to end up on the pocket line since that means his cue ball will be near the cushion when he shoots the 8 ball. Shane ended up a little flat on the 7 ball. At this angle, Shane has a couple good options. The first option is to roll forward, creating this angle on the 8 ball. While this is a good option, the cue ball will end up near the cushion when he plays the 8 ball. The second option, and the one Shane chose, is to use maximum high to bring the cue ball back across the 8 ball pocket line. The advantage of this shot is that Shane is putting distance between the rail and the cue ball which will make the shot on the 8 ball easier. When he shoots this shot, his goal is to cross the 8 ball pocket line. He'll be shooting this shot with maximum high and no side spin. At this angle, Shane will be using maximum high to send the cue ball in this direction. He won't be sending the cue ball to the side rail since by doing this, the cue ball may end up too close to the cushion. On this 8 ball shot, he's just going to use just a little bit of right spin to help widen the angle off the end rail. So here's the layout. Let's examine the first four balls. The key to running the first four balls is creating position on the three ball to get to the four ball. In order to get from the three ball to the four ball, Shane has three options. The first option is to try to land on or very close to the pocket line so he can draw back for shape on the four ball. The second option is to land short of the pocket line and send the cue ball this way with maximum high and right spin to send the cue ball three rails for position. While playing the shot this way will work, he just has to make sure he doesn't end up with a little more angle in the three ball, which will make it difficult to send the cue ball to the end rail. The third option and the one Shane played is to cross the pocket line, creating an angle like this on the three ball. At this angle, he can send the cue ball off the side rail and toward the end rail. Now Shane needs to figure out the best way to get to this position area from the two ball. When shooting the one ball, he doesn't want to spin the cue ball this way off the rail, where he'll have to pocket the two ball and go off the side rail. His goal when pocketing the one ball is to minimize his left spin so he can send the cue ball along this path, just missing the two ball. Now he has an angle on the two ball that he can use to send the cue ball off the end rail and across the three ball pocket line.
At this angle, he's going to be using a low stun shot along with left spin, which will send the cue ball to the end rail. His goal when shooting this shot is to use enough speed to at least reach the end rail. Before he shoots the four ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. The next problem Shane needs to solve is how he plans on getting from the six ball to the seven ball. An angle like this on the six ball will allow Shane to go one or two rails for shape on the seven ball. Since he'll be playing the eight ball in the side pocket, he won't need much of an angle on the seven ball. Once he's on the seven ball, he can draw back a couple inches, creating his angle on the eight ball to get on the nine ball. Now he needs to figure out the best way to get to this position area for the six ball from the five ball. If he rolls in the four ball, he can create this angle on the five ball. At this angle, he can either use a firm stroke sending the cue ball across the six ball pocket line, or he can use high left going two rails crossing the pocket line. But there's a better way to get his position for the six ball. In the game when Shane shot the four ball, he created this angle on the five ball, which will allow him to shoot softly using a touch of right spin to send the cue ball off the other side rail. By playing the shot this way, he ensures that he ends up on the proper side of the six ball pocket line, as opposed to playing this shot where the cue ball stays within the danger area much longer. When Shane shoots a five ball, he's gonna be using low right spin. The low spin along with the right spin helps send the cue ball a little higher off the other side rail. This six ball shot is a great shot to practice since it does require very good control of the cue ball. Here's the tangent line of the six ball, which means if the cue ball is sliding when it strikes the six ball, it's going to follow along this path. So on this shot, Shane's gonna make sure the cue ball is sliding when it strikes the six ball, and he's also gonna use about a tip of left spin. Now when the cue ball strikes the side rail, the left spin sends it in this direction, opening up his position window. So Shane ended up here on the seven ball. His ideal angle in the eight ball is right here. At this angle, he can softly roll in the eight ball and the cue ball will naturally travel toward the nine ball. In the game, when Shane shot the seven ball, he ended up a little flatter on the eight ball. Since he ended up flat on the eight ball, he either has to use a firm stun shot like this, or he can use maximum high with about two tips of right spin. While both of these shots will work, in the game, Shane shot the eight ball with maximum high and a touch of left spin, sending the cue ball off the side rail and toward the nine ball pocket line. So here's the layout. Let's examine the first four balls. The key to the first four balls is creating an angle in the five ball that will take the cue ball toward the six ball. One option is to land here on the four ball pocket line and draw back into this open area, which will allow him to go two rails with right spin, sending the cue ball in this direction. The other option and the one Niels chose is to cross the four ball pocket line landing here. At this angle, he can roll forward, sending the cue ball off the side rail, landing near the end rail. Or he can use a stun draw shot to send the cue ball directly to the end rail. With both shots, the goal is to pocket the four ball and cross the five ball pocket line. 
When Niels pockets the three ball, he's not going to draw the cue ball back since he wants to create a little distance between the cue ball and side rails. Instead, he'll use a stun shot with left spin, which sends the cue ball directly to the side rail and then across the four ball pocket line. On this shot, Niels ended up a little too close to the pocket line. At this angle, a maximum high shot will send the cue ball in this direction. Just like a previous shot that we looked at, if Niels can pocket the ball shooting below maximum high with a firm speed, he can send the cue ball further down the rail. This type of shot requires practice to develop a feel for both speed and where you need to strike the cue ball. For example, set up this shot and practice sending the cue ball to different targets along the side rail. Both speed and where you strike the cue ball have to be in sync in order to send the cue ball along the correct path. Before he shoots a 5 ball, let's examine the rest of the layout. The key shot going forward is getting from the 6 ball to the 7 ball. He could play for a flat angle in the 6 ball, then use low right to bring the cue ball back across half table. This option isn't bad, but getting from the 5 ball to this area requires excellent control of the cue ball. Ending up a little short is going to leave an awkward angle. Or this option where the cue ball lands here. And we either send the cue ball 2 rails like this, or go one rail landing here. The one rail option isn't bad, but since we're playing short side position on the seven ball, our position window isn't very large and we could end up with too much angle. And the two rail option wouldn't be preferred since if he goes a little too far and crosses the seven ball pocket line, now he's gonna have to switch pockets for the eight ball due to the angle on the seven. The best option to get from the 6 ball to the 7 ball, and the one Niels chose, is to land here then pocket the 6 ball going 4 rails for shape on the 7 ball. The key to this shot is using at least 2 tips to left spin. The left spin will help propel the cue ball around the table, so this shot doesn't require as much force as you would think. Once he's on the 7 ball, it's just a matter of creating an angle like this on the 8 ball to stun the cue ball off the side rail and toward the 9 ball pocket line. When he shoots the 6 ball, the goal is to strike the in rail near the first diamond with plenty of left spin. This will send the cue ball toward the middle of the right side rail. It's important that when he shoots his shot, he doesn't end up on the cushion, which will make his next shot extremely difficult to get on the 8 ball. On this shot, he'll be sending the cue ball 2 rails to create his angle for the 8 ball. He ended up just shy of his ideal angles, so he'll have to use a little more speed to pocket the 8 ball and move the cue ball away from the cushion. 